Preface to Iracema, the Honey Lips, a Legend of Brazil. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Iracema, the Honey Lips, a Legend of Brazil, by José de Alencar. Translated, with the author's permission, by Isabel Burton. Preface I cannot allow my readers to remain ignorant of the name of Senhor José de Alencar, the author of this and several other works, for he deserves to be as well known in England as in Brazil, and it must be the result of the usual modesty of a really clever man that he is not so. He is their first prose and romance writer. His style, written in the best Portuguese of the present day, one to be learned and copied, is in thorough good taste and feeling. It contains poetic and delicate touches, and beauty in similes, yet it is real and true to life. I cannot thank him sufficiently for having allowed so incompetent a translator as myself to be the first to introduce him to the British public. I have endeavored to be as literal as possible, but I cannot pretend to do him justice, for our harsh northern tongue only tells coarsely a tale full of grace and music in the Portuguese language. But I have done my best, and if he permits me to translate all his works, I hope to do better as I go on, especially, if he will again, as he has already done, give me instructions in Tupi, the language of the Aborigines. Isabel Burton, Santos, São Paulo, Brazil Historical Argument This legend of the Aborigines is laid in Ceará, a northern province of Brazil, at that time unknown and unconquered. In 1603, Pedro Coelho, a gentleman of Paraíba, another northerly province, then already belonging to the Portuguese, arrived at the mouth of the river Jaguaribi, in Ceará, with a command of eighty colonists and eight hundred Indians. He there founded the first settlement in Ceará, and called it Nova Lisboa. This Pedro Coelho was abandoned by his comrades when a certain João Soromenho was sent to him with reinforcements and was authorized to pay the expenses of the expedition by making captives or slaves. He did not respect even the Indians of the Jaguaribi River, who were friendly to the Portuguese. This proved the downfall of the growing settlement. The natives resented such tyranny. Pedro Coelho, with his wife and young children, was compelled to fly by land to his own province. In the first expedition was Martin Soares Moreno, a youth from Rio Grande do Norte, another northerly province belonging to the Portuguese. He entered into bonds of friendship with Jacauna and his brother, Pochi, who were chiefs of the Indians of the seaboard. In 1608, by order of Dom Diogo Menezes, he returned to establish a colony, and in 1611, he founded the fortified place of Nossa Senhora do Amparo, or Our Lady of Protection. Jacauna, who lived on the borders of Acaracu, river of the Heron's Nest, settled near it with his tribe to protect it from the Indians of the interior and from the French, who then infested the coast. Pochi eventually became a Christian and was baptized Antonio Felipe Camarão, he highly distinguished himself when the Dutch invaded the coast, and his services were richly rewarded by the Portuguese government. Martin Soares Moreno became a field marshal and was one of those brave Portuguese leaders who delivered Brazil from the Hollander invasion. Ceará should honor his memory as that of a good and valiant man, and the first settlement by Coelho at the mouth of the Jaguaribi having proved a failure, hold him to be her true founder. My readers will better understand this tale by my explaining 
that the Pichiguaras were an aboriginal tribe who occupy the shores between Paraíba and the Jaguaribe, or Rio Grande. Their chiefs were Jacauna and Poti, afterwards Camarão, the Prawn, two brothers, who were firm allies to the Portuguese. They were at war with the Tabajaras, another tribe occupying the mountains of Ibiapaba, and the interior as far as the province of Piauí. The chiefs of these inland people were also two. The first was Irapuã, which translated into Portuguese means Mel Redondo, or Round Honey, a wild and vicious bee of that name. This famous, bloodthirsty chief ruled in Ceará, but Grão Diabo, Big Devil, was lord of the Tabajaras in Piauí. Both were bitter enemies of the Portuguese, and allied themselves with the French of Maranhão, another northerly province, who had penetrated into and taken possession of the lands as far as the mountain range of Ibiapaba. End of preface.